moment that matters is now. Got so many shades, I thought I had a lazy eye. Oh, yo, what's good? It's a Rick Ross boss up type of day. What's, what's happening, bro? Where'd you, where'd you just step into? I got you hooked. I got you in. I got you in with the clickbait of the tutorial. I'm not doing a tutorial at all. I just totally, I'm kidding. I'm going to do it, but later I got to get through what I want to talk about first. Now, this is my show. It's my channel. It's what I do. Good morning. What a great morning. Oh my God, it's such a good one today. I'm gonna tell you real quick. I had a dream. I was with Kevin Hart and I was like making him laugh. I said something about like me catching something. I was like, yo, I snatched that. He's, and he like looked at me weird. And then like later, it was like a compound joke because we were like playing football or something because I played a lot of sports yesterday. And then I did it again. Yo, snatched. And he was cracking up. And the, the thought of like me making Kevin Hart crack up was like greatest in history. So when, when it happens in the future, when I manifest it and I'm with in, in the comedian circle and I love them and you make your peers laugh that's what it's about that's what it's about. respect to the peers that's what this tutorial is about it's about the details of the dunks what is it what's what's happening dunk life daily podcast we go off we go nuts we, we do it we live it every day we live we, we learn about our body our mind to get those details right that's what it's about today is going to be about um how, why the windmill dunk is the easiest dunk. And I really believe that. And there's, there's science behind it. There's science. Oh, my God. I'm a scientist now. I'm an astronomer. I'm a goddamn paleontologist, okay? So that's what we're doing. That's what we're doing. I got to go to Trader Joe's today because, oh, you know what? Today's grocery day. I went to my friends yesterday to celebrate his birthday, and I'm back. The week starts tomorrow. I got to get all my groceries. I got to stay healthy on that health grind. And I, you know what? I, uh, I looked in my fridge. My shit looking scarce, <laughs> bro. I got. I've been watching the free Meek, Meek documentary. When he hit, when he hooked up with Rick Ross, I'm just thinking, where did Rick Ross come from, dude? Like he just was like, huh. And next thing you know, he's popping, dude. I'm gonna be bumping Rick Ross for the next fucking decade. He's awesome. I want to put that in my rap too. Make my own sound effect. I don't know. My rap dude got some hate. Usually my YouTube videos, which is impeccable, get like 99% positive likes, which is incredible love. Because I think you guys feel my love. Everything I do is positive. I, I mean, there's I don't lie. I put the rim heights. If it's a baby rim, you know that. I work on every goddamn inch detail. I swear we'll get to the tutorial coming soon. I promise. And I get so much love, but that rap with the little dicky one, my best rap of all time, the one I was most proud of, the one I felt was very good, got some dislikes, bro. It was like 92%. I'm like, yo, I'm doing something right because the haters came out. Come on. Come on. Come here. That's what I want. I want that. All right. That's all I got to say is that when you're doing something right, oh, two things. Ready for this one? Two things. The haters come out to play, you know you do something right. And then the other thing, if you have any gay friends and then you post a mirror selfie and they all compliment it, you're looking good, kid. <laughs> That's my tip of the day. If you, po- if if you want to know if your Instagram's popping off as a physique type of person posting progress pictures of your, um, your skin, skin pictures, the gays come out, that's a compliment, bro. Call me gay all day. Uh, what's, what's my line to my rap? I got pride in myself. I'm the gayest, bro. Let's go. And I want my fucking sexuality to be questionable, just like what Chris D'Elia says. Doesn't fucking matter. Okay. This is definitely a dunk tutorial, though. I promise. Here we go. Okay. So now why is the fucking, sorry, windmill most, um, the easiest dunk? Here we go. So if you look here, basic lob, I run, uh, these are warm up dunks. I use arm swing, the ball's up there, I can go get it, right? Um, Hint, hint, off the dribble, same thing. I bring up the ball, I'm terrible off the dribble, and the diff, so that's gonna be another video. Why I'm better off the lob than off the dribble, and I'm gonna break that down, but I just wanted to give you a hint of how it starts and why the windmill. So the lob is the easiest because I go up, arm swing like this, the dribble's harder because I don't use my arm swing as much. This is my opinion, I'm not a certified dunk trainer, even though there's no such thing yet. Actually, is there? Um, but I do want to break that down in a separate video. Now off the dribble with one hand, I could lean a little bit. So we're getting at the hint. So one is the arm swing. One is like the ability to lean. Now, when you click it all together and you throw a big lob like this, I catch up and I can reach all the way up with one hand. I can use my full arm swing. So we're reaching, we have the full arm swing and that's why the lob I'm so good at and a lot more speed, a lot more speed. Cause I don't have to worry about the ball in my hand. Um, and now comes, as you see a little bit. Watch that. That's a that's a hundred percent yam right there. Okay, now the windmill. Bang. Okay. Now let's watch what happened here. Oh. 
Now here's the trick. I'm gonna give you a little trick. This is the secret right here why the windmill dunk is the easiest thing. So you saw how high I got on that windmill? God damn, I have bounce. It's a baby room. Um, here's the trick right here, and it's all about your center of mass. This is a height check. Ooh, okay, you saw that? Hype. Okay, boom, what happened there? Arms came down. What does that do? That raises, what is this? That raises your center of mass, okay? That is pushing your body higher. So whenever you see high checks do it, when my boys do it, Isaiah gets his fucking neck at the rim, CJ does it, everybody, everybody you see do a high check with their head, their center of, they, they put their arms down because it raises their center of mass. And what that does, it helps them use that weight upwards. So everybody's best jump most likely is when they do a high check with their head because they're not reaching and their center of mass is the highest. So they probably, in my opinion, and I think through science, <laughs> I'm a scientist, they get highest with that. So if we go back to the windmill dunk, if you look, I catch the ball up high, but then I'm pulling it down. So that's almost like a pump. I'm almost like pumping myself up. And that's why I've gotten it down. It was the first trick I learned. So I got the technique really fast. Hand speed is another trick for the windmill, but I also learned how to use that pump at the right timing. So if you catch it super high and you pump at the right time, it's, it almost gives you a boost. So watch in slow-mo one more time. Boom. So it, it's pretty simple, but I think that's a really big trick. And if you're, if you're able to dunk with one hand, I think you can get closer to a windmill than you may think. And I think it's the easiest dunk to do. And I'll get back to why in another video, why the two hands is the hardest dunk for me to do, especially off the dribble. But for now, the windmill is the easiest. You catch it, you get that sweet pump, you raise that center of mass and you're pumping it as you're going up and then you dunk it. So not only are you, um, doing a sick trick, but you're getting a pump that's almost easier than just keeping your arms above your head. So that is a secret, and now you're on the inside. Welcome to the Dunk Life Daily, where the insiders happen. If you're not in this, God, I mean, if you're in this, you're fucking loving it, aka the Ponzi scheme is, is, is popping. And that's it. Um, and now for the actual podcast, for those that know what the podcast is about, we have to do On This Day in History, because so many cool things happen throughout history, and we got to know about them. So what's today? Oh, I just saw a name that I like, August 25th, 1609, Galileo demonstrates his first telescope to the Venetian lawmakers. Now, here's a thing with Galileo that I actually know, which is a cool fact, because your boy reads a little bit, okay? And I think this is true, so don't hold me to it, but I am a fucking historian as well in addition. Galileo was an artist and he used to paint landscapes and things like that. So he had to utilize shadows. So when he saw through his telescope on the moon, he saw craters on the moon. I'm just double checking. This is still recording. He saw craters on the moon and he understood or mountains. I think it was, he understood that there was like grooves or not grooves, but like different landscapes on the moon because he understood shadows. People didn't know what they were seeing, but since he was an uh, artist, he understood shadows and that led him to discover the first mountain on the moon or something like that. But the point is his creative endeavors, those things that he enjoyed helped him in his career and also his scientific endeavors. So do stuff you enjoy, do the creative things because you don't know how they're going to overlap. And I think that's where the magic happens. And that's my tip of the day. Today in film, 1955, 16th Ven Ven Film Festival, Ordet, directed by Car Carl Theodore Dreyer, wins Golden Lion. I have one more tidbit to say at the end of this to wrap this up, so stay tuned. 1998, The Miseducation of Lauryn Hill debut album by Lauryn Hill is released by five Grammy albums of the year. Okay, I don't care. Today in sport, 1960, AFL begins placing players' names on the back of their jerseys. Interesting, that's pretty cool. Um... So what I wanted to say, the little tidbit was that, um, that windmill is like, sometimes you got to go down to go up. You know, you got to think, think about it. Like just because it's a trick doesn't mean it makes it harder. And so I'm going to go over those details a lot as I, cause I have so much experience, um, with the dunk world, watching all my friends dunk and having like talk to them. I feel like there's so many dunks that look harder or look like a 360 is not really a 360. What do we call it? Things like that and different plants and which plants are easier for things that there's a lot of breakdowns I want to do. So I would love to know what you guys want to see or specific dunks. Um, I think East Bay might be next, but I want to do why, why I suck off the dribble is the title of the next video and why I'm so much better off a of lob. And I want to get, break that down completely like I did today. So if you like today's video, I would love to know. Um, and if not, if you just want to get hype, fucking hype me up in the comments, you know, that gives me energy. And then the next tomorrow we fucking shoot through the moon when we get on this podcast. Now the dunk lifer of the day, baby. Who is it? Who is it? Who is it? Who that? Who that? Oh, huh? Mason Anderson. This is so underrated. I love these. Hilarious. My dude, that's my man for the day. Let's go. Have a great day. Bless up. Have a great day. Uh,
uh, keep it bumping. Uh, Three oh five. Uh, I don't know. I gotta. I gotta put food in my fridge. I'm trying. I, I wish I knew more Rick Ross lines, but I have very limited um, impersonations. All right. To the loop. Huh? That's young life. Oh, that's the anthem right there. Tried to make an intro. Ended up making an anthem.